What's up, guys? This is Xander Bennett here from Rear Candy with a deck profile on Zara Aura GX. This is a deck that our patron, Brian Ciarata, uh, suggested for us to do. Sorry if I mispronounced that last name, but um, if you're interested in picking some certain decks for us to do for our Testing Ground series, definitely check out our Patreon. We're pretty close with our patrons over there. Uh, at a certain level, you are able to suggest decks for us to do, and so this is a deck that he suggested for us to do, and so we definitely wanted to check it out coming into the Lost Thunder era. So uh, let's just get started with the deck profile here. We have four Zara Aura GX. This is a card that we praised very highly over in our set review that you can watch on this channel. It's uh, the, the joke is that it's a Dark Eye Buzzwool Turtonator. Uh, it has a little bit of everything. So it's a 190 hit point electric basic that has an ability that gives all of your Pokemon with electric energy attached to it free retreat. So with a, with a simple lightning energy, your Pokemon can just retreat out of the active, which is very convenient. And then the middle attack for Lightning Lightning Colorless, which is even better than Knuckle Impact, uh, lets you do 160, and this Pokemon can't attack on this next turn. But it's pretty irrelevant because of the ability to just retreat and save all your energies, and then just end up back in the active with a Guzma or another effect. And the GX attack for one Lightning lets you attach five basic energy of any kind from your discard pile to your Pokemon. This deck is always going to be accelerate, accelerating lightnings, but if you're playing something like this with maybe Rayquaza, you can get electric and grass energy back with this too. So this card is just a powerhouse overall, which is a very strong card. I don't know if the way that this list is put together is the best home for it, but it's definitely a good starting place for such a powerful card like this. From there, we have two Tapu Koko GX. This is a card that's been just slightly underplayable the whole time that it's been around, and I really hope that this is its chance to shine. It's a 170 HP electric basic that has an ability called Arrow Trail that whenever you bench it, you may make it your active Pokemon and move any number of lightning energy attached to your Pokemon to it. So Sky High Claws is the attack that we're probably using for it. For Lightning Lightning Colorless, it's a flat 130. And the big thing here is that it has no weakness or resistance. So things like Baby Buzzwole or Buzzwole GX just kind of hit this thing and don't do the relevant damage like they would to a Zera Aura. The GX attack, though it is not the one that we will normally use, is good for Lightning Lightning Colorless. It's 50 times the number of energies they have in play with Tapu Thunder GX, but it's going to be so much more important to use their Aura's GX attack that this does not come up as often. From there, we have two Tapu Lele GX, just an all-star of the format, just being able to get whatever supporters we need. We do have a few one ofs in here that this helps search out, so it's just a very important card for every single deck in Standard. From then, we have some one ofs So we have a one of Baby Tapu Koko, just a 110 HP electric basic that for a double colorless does flying flip. We don't play any double colorless, but just putting 20 on all of their Pokemon can set up some really important numbers for Zara Aura and Tapu Koko. And then for Lightning Lightning Colorless, you do 100 just flat. Um, this card was underwhelming overall, but I think it's good just as a free retreater and also because if we randomly hit a Hoopa, we can do something about it. We also have one Raikou, and this is not a card that I tried to use as much. I feel like it's better whenever you're thinking about it actively. In your deck, for one lightning, you do 30 and you attach a lightning energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon in play. So just a Oblivion Wing with uh, helps you set up some math. And then Electric Ball for lightning, lightning, colorless, does 90. I think that this card is probably a 4 of or a no of, or at least like a 3 of or a no of, just so you can get some extra energy in play without using your GX attack. And so I feel like the 1 of is just really bad. I'm probably going to cut it from this list, but I, there's a list for, for Raikou, Zara Aura, that plays multiples of them. I'm not going to be surprised. From there, we have a 1-1 Alolan Ninetales GX line from the new set. So this is something I really wanted to try out in a deck like this, especially because of the importance of the card Electropower, which we'll talk about more later. But just being able to search a deck for two items is something strong in any deck, and it's really not that hard just to fit two cards into your deck. If you're not going to go for it, you can just Ultra Ball them away, and this deck definitely has ways to burn it. This deck's not playing any copies of Sightseer, but decked with Sightseer, they can just, if they're not going to go for the Ninetales in that game, they can just throw it away before they start drawing cards. So I think the 1-1 Ninetales is something that we might see randomly showing up more often. And it was very good in this video. If you saw the testing grounds, it came up a lot and was highly relevant. So our last Pokemon is this random Shuckle from the new set, also from Lost Thunder. It has an ability that lets you battle compressor your deck and discard three colorless energies. So you search through your deck, or search through your deck. I didn't know why I said colorless. You search the deck for three basic energies, and you put them into your discard pile. So this fuels Nitro Tank super easily. 
Um, the list is currently playing Acrobikes, which we'll get to, but if we didn't play Acrobikes, I would almost play two of this card because of how important it is just to get as many energy in your discard pile, turn one as possible. Not because you think you'll use two, but just to help your chances of drawing it, and then if you prize it, you still have outs. So from there, we are just going to our supporters. We have four Lily, just the best turn one supporter that we can be playing in a deck that's not wanted to play Elm's Lecture. Just draw until you have six, but if your first turn, draw until you have eight. Phenomenal card. Four Cynthia, just as our another great card for us to be using. Three Guzma. I would see a universe where you could play four, but because we have so many ways to reset our active with the ability on Zara Aura, Arrow Trail on Taipo Coco, and also the Free Retreat Baby Coco, I think that Guzma ends up being just fine as a three of. We have one Professor Kakui and then one Volkner as our last supporters in the deck. Professor Kakui just gives us 20 damage whenever we need it. The two cards isn't really the reason why we're playing it. It does help with some more relevant numbers. So for example, a Choice Band Kakui um, Thunder Impact, I'm pretty sure. I might be messing it up. Uh, does 210, and then also, instead of the Choice Band, you can have an Electro Power. So the math does come up pretty frequently. And then Volkner can turn into a Glorified Kakui. Just without drawing the cards, you search your deck for an Electro Power and a Lightning Energy just so you can do the damage that you need. But also, if you don't need the electric enter the damage, you can just kind of get any item in your deck to help your consistency out. That's all the supporters in the deck. It does look low, but it functions pretty well. I could see more of these also, and I think that if we're cutting these, I would probably go more in that direction, um, just to kind of get that 20 damage whenever we need it instead of Coco, and then Volkner gets our energy when we need it whenever we don't have Raikou. Uh, four Ultra Ball, just... Not enough can be said about this card. The card is just phenomenal. Or Acrobike, just as a way to go through our deck some more. Acrobike incentivizes me to either want to play a thicker Nine Tails line or a Rescue Stretcher, which we'll talk about later. But you just look at the top three cards of your deck, put one into your hand, and then discard the other card. This gets Lightning Energy into the discard pile and also just draws this card in a big basic deck. From there, the reason to play this deck overall for Electro Power. So we haven't seen Plus Power since Black and White. And anyone who played in the air with Plus Power will tell you that Plus Power was a very good card. The damage did add up, and Hypnotoxic Laser was just that even better. And I think we're going to see uh, Electro Power show up very well in Lightning decks until this card rotates, just because it makes your math so easy. It's like a choice band, except it can do the extra damage to any Pokemon, and it doesn't have to be uh, attached to it. So the math just comes up really well, and you want as many of these cards as possible in your deck. From there, we have three choice bands just to continue our math. And this is that just hits some crazy numbers really easily. A Tabu Coco with a choice band and an Electro Power can do 190, knocking out Buzzwolves. A Zero Aura with a choice band and a Electro Power knocks out Zoroarks. One of these in the Kakui or a Flying Flip knocks out a Zorark. Two of these and a Kakui does 230. Your numbers add up really quick with this deck. And so it's just a very strong ability to be able to do that. Um, the other two we play in this deck is two counter gain. So this is a new card that came out of Lost Thunder. If you are behind on prizes, all of your attacks cost one colorless less. So both of these attackers attack for one colorless. And also, I believe at one point I used Energy Drive with this and a Lightning because I was behind on prizes. So that's another play that you can do. But you can also just... This is good for whenever you have a Zero Aura, you move most of your energies off of it because of Taco Coco, and then you fall behind on prizes after the Coco dies and you just attach one of these to the Zero Aura. And just start smacking stuff again. From there, to round it out, we have two nest balls just to kind of help our consistency a little bit. I think that they probably have to stick, even though we don't really want to be getting Tabu Coco or Tabu Lele or Shuckle with it. I think that you just kind of need that consistency to help you get your Zero Auras out whenever you need to. Two Aether Paradise Conservation Area, the most frustrating card in standard to pronounce. Um, it's kind of a random card in this deck, but there are some very important stadiums that other decks are playing that incentivize us to want to play this. But it says basic grass Pokemon and basic lightning Pokemon take 30 damage less from the opponent's attacks. Um, it applies for active and bench, so that comes up pretty frequently. And it's after applying weakness and resistance, which is just how these cards are normally templated. So this can change some math that would be like a one-hit KO into a two-hit KO, and that's good enough for us to play this. If this works for one turn in a metagame with lower counts of Field Blower, this is good enough and it's done its job. We also want some more stadiums so that whenever we play our Thunder Mountain Prism Star, we've kind of bumped the rest of their stadiums off of the table. Thunder Mountain is a very good card. The longer we get to use it, the better it gets. So 
It has the same text that all of the other Prism Stars do, where you can't feel blower it away, it has to be discarded by playing into the stadium or an attack, and it says that your Lightning Pokemon's attacks cost one Lightning Energy less. So there's a universe where you can use the main attack on Zeraora for one energy with a counter gain and the Thunder Mountain, and that is just hilarious to think about. Um, this card is just really good overall. It's hard to make plays around this card because since it's a one of you don't know when you're going to hit it, and there's no way for us in the standard environment except Mallow to kind of draw a stadium whenever we need to. So we can't get it with Nine Tails, we can't get it with Volkner. So we can't really play with this card as like doing plays around it. But whenever you get it, it's really worth having. It's just very important. And then to round out the deck, just a very simple 12 Lightning Energy. There's nothing special here. If Elixirs were around, we'd play more of these. But also, if Elixirs were around, this deck would be insane. So I'm fine with this deck kind of being middle of the road as of right now. But I think that there are a few things that you can change to make it better. I think if you want to get rid of the two non gx attackers and just not worry about your matchups against like Hoopa and those things that kind of are not as relevant these days, you can turn them into a Kakui and a Volkner just for whenever you need it. But if you're not a big believer in the Volkner, you could make it maybe a third state, a third either Paradise or a Rescue Stretcher just to get back your Ninetales pieces if you have to discard them with Acrobike. But that is all for this deck profile. And also, if you're interested in sending in deck requests to us for us to do content about, be sure to once again check out our Patreon. I'm also going to be putting an article on Alola Ninetales GX and some other decks that you can play with it onto our Patreon. Just a very exciting card that we all love very much. So definitely check that out on there. But uh, you got to be following our Patreon to do it. So thank you guys for listening to this deck profile. I'm Xander Bennett, signing out.